Welcome to the Town of Court of America, Town of Court of Madeira Planning Commission for Tuesday, May 25th. Would you please take the roll, Mr. Wolf? Sure. I'll start with uh, uh, Commissioner Metcalf. Here. Commissioner Bundy. Here. Commissioner Chase. Here. Uh, Commissioner Bendel, who's absent, and Commissioner Rizzo. Here. Great. Okay, so uh, we've taken the uh, roll call and now we open the meeting to public comment for that which is not on any agenda for tonight. So if you have a comment and you'd like to make it something that we're not scheduled to talk about tonight, you have three minutes to do so. Um, this is a tradition that we have at the beginning of every public meeting and we will see if there is anyone with a hand up or with a, an email to public comment if it, yeah uh, commissioner chase uh chairman chase maybe we can just i only see one attendee right now from the public here so maybe we, if we wait maybe people are just filtering in i i'd hate to uh right. sort of not uh i don't know not allow people to filter in. Uh, maybe more people are eating dinner uh, at this time. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> but uh, in any case, maybe we can look at the public comment email. I know we have multiple ways now to to comment. But uh, Tracy, are you seeing anything on public comment? I'm. I'm not. Uh, let me just check the, the junk mail just in case. Um, I don't see any public comment uh, coming in by email. Um, okay. And there, we also have enabled the Q&A um, feature. If you won't, don't want to speak, attendees can type their questions there and I can read them to the commission if we, that's at the bottom of the screen and the raise hand button um, for those attendees is also at, at the bottom of your screen or your phone. Okay, good. We, I think we've uh, effectively stalled for time so we can get, uh, we got at least one more. Ms. Hale on board, but uh, go ahead, Chair Chase. You can okay, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> so if you've not decided to comment on something that's not on tonight's agenda, then that's okay. We're out of time. We are going to move on to tonight's primary focus, which is the town hall project at 300 Tamil Pius Drive. This is tonight a business item and it's not a hearing. So we are not conducting a uh, hearing for the purposes of resolution. This is review and recommendation to the town council of the revised town hall project design. That's our task tonight. And Mr. Boyle. I'm going to, um, excuse me. Um, yes, um, go. I, I, I believe I need to recuse myself. Um, from this presentation oh, right now. Rizzo. Yes, thank you. Excuse me. So I will uh, shut my video off. I, I don't know, Tracy, if you want to put me as a, um, take me off as a participant. How that runs. Sorry, Jim. I think we did do that last time. This um, made him an attendee and then brought him back as a panelist. Uh, so I'll, I'll do that, Jim, and I'll add you back at, at the, if this item is, is over. And I believe if you do want to make comments as a member of the public, you are able to do that. Is that right, um, Anne? That is correct, provided that it's a comment with respect to his personal interest. Okay. It has to be about the project's impact on him or a financial interest of his. Okay. All right. Okie doke. I mean, it sounds like we're all uh, taken care of there. Um, I'm actually going to start this. Um, uh, st kick off the presentation this evening. Um, we have a presentation for you. I'll, I'll make an introduction and then uh, we're, we're lucky to have Ron Cappy as well here, the project architect, who will be making a presentation and showing you some slides this evening. Um, also on the call, uh, the project team, including uh, Phil Boyle, uh, senior planner, um, RJ Suko, director of public works, and Jared uh, Berrio, who's also senior engineer and you uh, thought you may have been uh, 
done with this project, but alas, uh, no, it's back for another round of review with you. Um, you know, uh, the last time this commission saw this project, um, it was labeled as the remodel and addition project after a long uh, public review period at the, um, the uh, planning commission recommended approval of the remodel and addition project at its, Feb at its October 27th meeting of 2020. And then at its uh, February 2nd, 2021 meeting, the town council approved the remodel and addition project that was recommended for approval by the planning commission. So a little bit of background on how, we're, how we got here. Um, based on the comments made at the meeting, um, at the town council meeting at February 2nd, um, staff explored the option of demo demolishing the existing town hall building and replacing it with a new building that would include the same fu functions as before, but would be slightly smaller in size by eliminating and not replacing several basement type spaces in the existing town hall. Uh, this option was considered a better long-term solution in terms of containing un unforeseen costs and allowed staff to also consider bringing a more unified and cohesive design approach to the entire facility. Uh, staff presented both the original remodel and the addition project and the new demo and replacement project. That's the what we're calling this. Well, we haven't officially titled it, but that's what I'm calling this new version that you're seeing now, the demo and replacement project to the town council at its May 4th, 2021 town council meeting. And the town council unanimously approved the demo and replacement project, uh, including funding to design the project to a zero net energy and zero net carbon standard uh, and authorized staff to proceed with final engineering plans and specifications via e extending our contract with Ron Cappy, who's here tonight as our project architect. Uh, the town council also provided direction to staff to seek additional uh, public comment and input from the planning commission on the design of the portion of the project that would now replace the existing town hall and how best to integrate it with the rest of the project, which was not changing. So tonight's meeting is really focused on the design of what we're calling the West Wing, housing the new permitting center and staff offices. So we're hoping tonight to obtain some consensus recommendations from the planning commission this evening regarding the preferred design for the West Wing and bring those recommendations back to the town council uh, for uh, on June 15th for consideration and approval. And that will help us keep the project schedule um, on track. And, and I think the goal, as, as RJ mentioned uh, earlier this month at the town council meeting would be to provide, uh, go out to bid, I think at the end of the year, is that right, RJ? Um, by December or so. So a lot of work needs to be done in order to get there. Um, and with that, I'm going to, um, unless there's anything else, RJ or Jared or, or Phil, you wanna say at this this point, I was gonna turn it over to, um, turn it over to Ron uh, to go through uh, some slides and, and talk about the design here, you know, how we got to where, uh, what we're looking at sort of on this cover page here. and. We'll see some more images in, in more detail uh, in, in Ron's presentation. So Ron, do you wanna jump sure. in here and, and take it away? Thank you, Adam and honorable commissioners. Thank you for uh, hearing me tonight. Phil, I guess what I'll do is say next when I want the slide to change. How does that work for you? That works for me. Okay, good, next. <laughs> okay, we wanna start with a, a brief summary uh, so what we're uh, talking about now with the proposed design is a total construction square foot of 10,920. Uh, we had in the previous uh, design 11,300. So we have about a difference of 380 square feet. Uh, so it's close. Uh, as uh, Adam mentioned, the existing building is to be demolished. It, we're still staffing, we're still uh, housing uh, 24 FTE and part-time and seasonal staff. Uh, the guiding principles have remained pretty constant uh, throughout this, this process. Uh, the building height and bulk has been reduced through steady public engagement. 
Uh, we have the three redwood trees that we are saving and using as a natural canopy for the community outdoor plaza. The, we have already expanded the community room council chambers in uh, previous uh, design iterations and enlarged the public service counter by threefold. Uh, we've dealt with the, uh, the accessibility issues uh, by a central lobby with a stair and elevator. Adam mentioned the new sustainable design goals of zero net energy and zero net carbon that was approved by the town council including a significant roof mounted solar array. The budget has uh, been approved as approximately 10.6 million at this point. Next. So uh, this is where we, hold on a second, the, uh, I have to read. Uh, hold on a second. I couldn't, I couldn't read the side the way it was. Uh, I have to change my... Yeah, it's kind of, is it going off the edge of your screen? Yeah, let, let, me, let me get back, excuse me. Okay, I can read that. Can you, you everybody see it okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so like I said, the, the uh, the new proposal is 10,920 square feet. The lower level is 4,966 and the upper level is 5,954. Previously, we had uh, the existing building was, uh, we were using 3,695 square feet. So we've increased the lower level uh, uh, for usability of usable square footage. And the new construction was 7,615. The, the plaza has remained the same at 2,000 square feet. So that's just to get some of, the, uh, some of that out of the way. Uh, the original proposal worked with the existing building and incorporated it into a new town hall complex. We worked at that time to remodel and reuse the existing building from a fiscal point of view that it was less expensive to remodel than to build new construction. However, the existing building has been shown, has been showing its age to the point that it was recently decided that demolition was the best option. The building originally, the fire station, and then remodeled the current, current form has, has run its, its life cycle. Next. This shows you a comparison of the uh, two uh, footprints. The, uh, the purple uh, is the new footprint. The, Aqua shows the, the old existing building. Uh, so we've reduced the width by about eight feet. The, the main level is now 48 foot by 53 feet. We're concentrating in this presentation on the West Wing, as, as Adam mentioned, we, we really did not change anything about what, the lobby or the council chambers. So uh, hopefully the commentary is about this incorporation at, at this point. The west side of the main level has also been enlarged for a patio opportunity on Willow Avenue. And the east side of the council chambers was moved four feet away from the driveway and that's for additional bioswale area. And all this ended up centering the redwood tree a little bit more on the plaza. Next. So the May 4th version started with matching the slope gable ridge of the council chambers. However, as the floor plan for the new western portion of the town hall was developed, it became necessary to align exterior windows with interior work areas and offices. Uh, ultimately, we determined that it presented this uh, uh, version presented uh, too much of a of tall stucco walls on Tamil Pius Drive. And uh, as I mentioned, the exterior elevation did not really reflect the interior. Okay, next. Then on, uh, in, as we started to develop this more, uh, this is a, a progress drawing from May 12th, um, where we first introduced the idea of a, of a hip roof for the Western uh, Administrative Office wing. Uh, we're showing you here a version with a clear story uh, triangular window at the apex that echoes and matches the window shown on the north elevation. We'll review that north elevation in a little while. Uh, the upper windows would bring more light into the interior, into the center of the building. 
Uh, with the windows, with the addition of the windows at the south and the west wall, we decided that sufficient light will be brought into the building without the upper clear story window. So we do not move ahead with this uh, with this version. So let's move ahead. Okay, so the one that we're bringing for review and recommendation uh, is uh, a hip roof uh, with no, no clear story window, a uh, hip roof on all four sides with uh, window locations on the west and the south wall that correspond with the interior floor plan. Understand that the floor plan was, uh, was modified. The pro we had to go through a little bit of reprogramming. Uh, so now what you're looking at is our windows that align with offices and workspaces and we have, uh, this will be an exposed ceiling uh, from the inside beams. Uh, the height is close to the height of the council chamber uh, east wing. And the windows are in the same motif as we have shown you on the north elevation. Uh, we think that this, the, the uh, two wings offset each other uh, as uh, identifying what their functions are. The, uh, the council chamber is uh, more open and more public. The public counter and the administrative area is a little more closed down uh, and office-like. Uh, next. To briefly look at the floor plan, uh, we made some changes to the floor plan. Basically what we did was if you focus on the redwood trees, we pulled the building further away from the redwood trees. There we had a, a, uh, a conference room uh, that was uh, aligned in the uh, uh, east-west direction. Now we put it in the north-south direct, uh, direction in the new wing. I don't have a pointer. Uh, yeah, Phil, is that you? Yeah, there's the conference room right there. And then we brought the break room also into the new wing, uh, which is over to the left there. <laughs> so uh, what we are, there were some comments as, as we progressed through this design from public about aligning the upper floor and the lower floor. And so what we have now is a much more alignment between the upper floor and the lower floor. If you look all the way to the left, that is crawl space now uh, over on the west side. So we're, we've only developed half of the lower floor at this point. Uh, but we basically have a, a, a two-story structure uh, throughout. The, and at one time, we had a lot of the, uh, we had some functions that were, come, that were coming under the plaza, which might have been interesting, but we have pulled back now from that. And what that does is it leaves a natural terrain for the redwood trees and the reduced retaining walls. We're showing you two utility rooms now, one for each wing. Uh, we uh, think that we'll be servicing uh, the, uh, the spaces with a, a mid floor a plenum area that uh, uh, put, uh, uh, feeds air down for the lower floor and up for the, for the upper floor. Uh, our idea is that we don't want to be seeing the uh, utility uh, equipment uh, around the site or on the roof. And we've also now made the lower level all at the same elevation. Last time we were dealing with the slight elevation variation of two feet when we were trying to match and work with the existing building. Next. Going upstairs, you see the service counter and you see the, the space over on the west side, which uh, we haven't shown as, as that developed uh, uh, on Willow, uh, but we see that as a potential for a, a courtyard area that uh, uh, could, be, could be developed in, in a very interesting way. Uh, the central plaza is the same, the, uh, and now we have another uh, courtyard area. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep going. So now we're looking at the proposed site plan. Uh, it's a slightly smaller uh, building footprint. This is the roof that I was talking about, the, the hip roof at the administrative wing. Trellis, uh, we've maintained the trellis for wayfinding to the entry point. And we still have these glazed light wells at, at the central plaza. Uh, really though now the under, under plaza area is a lot more opened up to uh, natural light. Next.
So this is a South perspective, uh, which uh, you already got a glimpse of it with the intro. Uh, the new roof form blends with the previously designed roof forms. The, the corner windows of the West Wing echo those of the council chambers. Uh, the office windows echo the motif established throughout the rest of the building and the clear functional delineation between council chambers and administrative office. Next. From the north side, you see the, uh, the way the hip roof uh, joins with the, uh, the, the lobby roof. At this point, the uh, elevator access is provided from the parking level via the lower uh, lobby area. There's an exterior stair that comes up to the, the service counter, public service counter. Uh, you see the uh, courtyard and residential scale on Willow Avenue. And just, I want to point out that frosted glass will be used as part of the window design to provide neighborhood uh, privacy, which has been discussed at, at other meetings. Next. This is the west elevation. So uh, you can see that on Willow, it really blends in with the residential character. There are, are a number of uh, hip roof type of designs that are actually on that street uh, and in the uh, immediate neighborhood. So uh, what's interesting to me is that the scale, uh, as you look at this elevation, is like a one story, more almost residential type of uh, scale. Whereas you just saw and then when it comes around to the north side, it also blends very well with the two story, uh, more, uh, uh, more uh, formal uh, uh, town hall structure. So we, we see that, we, you know, there's been, there's been discussion about a number of ideas for this area, you know, community rose garden, butterfly garden, native planting area, public art, sculpture. We're showing it rather empty right now in this proposal, but it can be a container for any of these community generated ideas. Next. So this is what I meant about the North Elevation. For me, uh, the, uh, the hip roof provides kind of a, a counterpoint to the council chambers. And I, I, I think the composition is strong on this side where uh, it's actually a high point. So it's interesting to me that it can have a residential character and at the same time, you know, be a dominant feature when you come, when you go around and look at it in three dimensions. Uh, the rest, I think you've pretty much seen before. The gray color of the windows represents where the frosted glass would be located. Next. And then the, the south elevation, again, as viewed from Tamalpais Drive, uh, gable roof at the council chambers, hip roof at the administrative wing. It becomes a contrasting focal point. Uh, signage and flagpoles at the council chamber reinforce the civic purpose of the east wing. Next. This is a, uh, a preliminary uh, example of a, a solar panel uh, installation. It approximates 60 kilowatt, which is what was determined as the, uh, the energy goal uh, to be uh, site generated for uh, zero net energy. Uh, the redwood trees cast shadows. And so some, some of the southern, south facing portions of the roof uh, uh, are not really effective for uh, solar panels. And then in this case, we kept the south, uh, the south face of the uh, public service counter uh, free of uh, solar panels at this time. And uh, so uh, this is for more discussion. We'll have to get involved with the engineers to, to make this happen. But this gives you an idea of the way we're thinking about it. And I think with that, that concludes uh, what I wanted to show you uh, for your discussion and for your review and your recommendation uh, for the June 15th uh, town council meeting. Thank you. So at this time, I think um, commissioners were, were available for questions um, on what's been presented or if you have questions for staff and then obviously um, open it up you know, as we normally would for public comment when you're ready, uh, Chairman Chase. Thank you. <clears throat>
Well, we'll start with that and we'll see if Dr. Bundy has any questions for the staff of uh, that presentation. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ron, the, you know, I had questions before on the generator location and the access to uh, either replace the generator or work on it. Is that hallway adequate for that or have you decided on a, a power wall battery system for the generator? Uh, Phil, do you want to bring it to the uh, lower floor plan? Sure. It's the, we have a generator location over in the east wing. Keep going, one more. If I wish we could zoom in, uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, right around where that arrow is. There's oh, thank you. That's good. Yeah, there's the generator right there, and that's the way in and the way out. Uh, you can see, uh, as far as as that was concerned. Beyond that, we haven't really done any engineering, but we have. But this is a general location uh, that we were thinking it would go. Yeah, if I if I may, um, commissioners and, and um, commissioner Bundry. Um, so we're we're certainly going to look at um, all of those options, especially the the deep green options, the um, battery storage options with the solar. Um, we actually just received a grant to do that on the community center as well as the corporation yard, which I think will help us all really wrap our head around, you know, what that looks like, what that entails. Um, also, there's also an option that I, I think is worth considering through the process, the design process of, um, they do actually have these more temporary portable carts um, that are reasonably, um, more reasonably priced that um, could serve us in, in the short term until we find um, potentially a grant that can fund the, the future ultimate um, battery storage project. Um, there was a Cal OES grant that we received and, and we've now seen it two years running. So um, there's a high likelihood that it could come around again. And so if it does, this would obviously be a prime project to apply for. So um, I, I think, yeah, in the coming months, we're really gonna drill down on that. But, but I think, um, you know, I think we still can, can manage in the, in the interim whether we go um, you know, any, any one of those options. Well, I think that was uh, one of my thoughts was that we're trying to go zero net energy, zero net carbon, and the battery uh, option would facilitate that. And the thought that uh, I had in addition to that was to be able to have an electrical hookup for a portable generator if there was a prolonged uh, power outage uh, because of some natural disaster or some other situation that a uh, portable generator could be in the parking lot for the duration of the emergency if uh, necessary. Um, the, uh, the other uh, uh, question I had uh, was uh, the, the West uh, uh, building and the West uh, or the uh, Western uh, side on Willow just really sort of at this point uh, from the standpoint of landscaping or how to actually use that as I understand what you're saying, Ron. Yeah, uh, Phil, go back one. Yeah, what we're showing you now is the existing landscaping. Those are the existing trees. But yes, we have an opportunity now to uh, develop that uh, to a nice outside space. Yeah, because when I looked at it, I thought it was a parking space at first, but now I understand that uh, this is to be uh, further developed uh, later at this point. Uh, yeah. And also, uh, I remember from before, we, we had bike racks and EV charging uh, planned for the, uh, for the building and the parking lot, is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. And then I wanted to, to ask about uh, Jonna Hale's uh, question in regard to storage and display of historical documents. And I also have to acknowledge that uh, I am a longtime board member and current president of the Corte Madera Community Foundation. Jana, of course, is the heart and soul of the organization, but uh, she's been uh, shepherding all these various documents around uh, different locations. Uh, and I understand from Todd that there, there is a plan to use that. Uh, is, is that gonna be a designated area or is this just gonna be some office space that's, that will not be utilized? Well, I remember in one of the public meetings, I, I had a nice conversation with Jenna. And uh, if you could go to the floor plan, uh, Phil, 
we've identified four possible locations. So this is something that, again, uh, the community is going to get involved with. But uh, the main in the main lobby, uh, there we have two walls uh, that we thought uh, are good candidates uh, for that. And then uh, downstairs, we have a smaller lobby that also uh, has, has a wall space. Uh, where are we? There we yeah, are. Right there. there. And then there's a conference room. We also, where you would normally have like a credenza uh, over by the utility uh, room going further south, Phil, with your arrow. Uh, yeah, right. Or, well, no, no, we're in the no, conference. Right. So anyway. No, yeah. We, we have about four spots that we think could be good. We'd like to look at the material with her and, and see what would be good, whether we do it all in one location or in several locations, we think is an important amenity. And we definitely want to highlight that. Yeah, and I, I, I think it sounds like there's a different sort of um, needs or, or different desires in terms of having a place to actually sit and, and sort of be with some of these or, or be, do some research or, or look back at some older documents, um, which may be in a more confined space, maybe more appropriate in a more confined space. But then there's also, which is really exciting, some of these opportunities for when you're coming out of the or you're coming into the lo lobby on the lower level, a display wall, and then, uh, of course, on the way uh, into the council chambers after in this nice uh, wide lobby area to have some really exhibit space that would be great to um, exhibit some of uh, and showcase some of the historical references or documents or, or other, um, or, you know, from time to time it could change to art, uh, um, you know, some uh, art exhibition space or what, what have you, but there's some nice um, opportunity there, I think. Um, so it's, that's, those are sort of the, uh, I, I think we see this as sort of the continuing dialogue and, and really a, 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 a sort of a fun part of the process that will develop as this moves forward where where there can be uh, opportunities for community involvement. I, I think what we talk, talked about with the additional space on Willow as well could be a nice opportunity to sort of talk about landscaping with the community and, and what should, you know, what opportunities might be there for, um, you know, different um different type of landscaping features and amenities or or what have you natural area or demonstration garden what, whatever it is i don't know what what have you so um but those are all great converse, conversations to have as we move forward that we think are, are additional opportunities to engage with our community and really turn this sort of uh, you know design and, and the architecture into a real place that the community feels is is you know their own and all of our, you know, a place where uh, they have the, the imprint on it, so. Okay, go ahead, Bob. No, thank you, those, those were my concerns. All right, Phyllis, do you have any uh, questions for staff at this point? Uh, I would like to follow up on what Bob was just talking about because I like the idea of the exhibit space but there has to also be some storage space. There's certain documents which should be put away and there should be maybe temperature controls and things like that. I don't know what Jana has. I mean, I know some of the stuff, but she knows better than I and certainly Bob does too, all of it. So besides having a space to display things, you need a space to keep these documents and things that then can be taken out and looked at when you know the public wishes to do research or study whatever so i think that should be kept in mind a space for that along with being able to exhibit okay and as far as any of the other i don't have any other questions i'll wait until we talk about the design and stuff and i then can talk about some of the ideas i've had all right thank you Phyllis. um Phil, would you take it to the lower floor floor plan? So uh, on the west side of the building there, downstairs, you've labeled it as crawl space Correct. down there, but it's full height. It's it, this can be considered unused space at this point or unprogrammed space. That's right. Uh, you know, we haven't, you know, designed that, but yes, it would, could it be expansion space in the future? Is that where you're going with your question? It could be. Well, certainly, partly, but um, to echo the previous commentary here, I think that um, it's 
the town needs an archive space, not only for historical stuff, but um, uh, they need archives for plans for certain things. And uh, it would be good to have such a space. The problem with archive space is that every once in a while you have to go out and throw stuff out if it's temporary storage. But that's what I was wondering if it was full depth there uh, or it was somehow a higher space, but it is expandable space. Yeah. Okay. Um, when do we get to uh, review the uh, public comment letter? We'll do that after we hear from public comment, I, I think, uh, going forward. So, yeah, and I, we did include um, some late, and I think there's emails that were sent um, with some of the commentary that we got from um, Mr. Harlock, John Hale, and also Commissioner Metcalf. I think uh, just can I get a confirmation, Phil, and, and yes, that it was yes, it correct. was included? All right. So yeah, all, all of that was good. submitted um, to the commissioners and is was posted on our website as well. So, but absolutely. Um, we can go over those in more detail um, at, uh, whenever you'd like to do so. Okay, that's great. Well, let's start out by opening this up to public comment. Um, and uh, we have uh, three minutes for anybody that wants to make a comment. Um, Tracy, who yes. do you have with any um, raised hands? I see Pat uh, Ravazio has her hand raised. Pat, I just allowed you to talk. If you want to unmute yourself, go right ahead. Thank you very much. I'm following this process with great interest and excitement about coming up with a really uh, wonderful new town hall. I'm just wondering, though, if you might just want to consider f flipping and doing the mirror image of this, because I do think this West End is a beautiful opportunity to have some nice outdoor space. But if that were the council chambers, then when the council goes on break or there's an overflow crowd, there would be sort of a nice um, opening of a place. And I know you've I know you've made real progress in, in looking at it a different way, but I think part of that came from the fact that we were originally going to remodel the existing building, and so we wanted new council chambers somewhere else. But now that we're scraping the whole thing and starting from scratch, I just think that we could create something really beautiful facing west where the windows would capture the view of the mountain maybe above the council chambers and i just think you could do something more you know just more special than where it is now where you sort of in the downhill area next to the fire department is where the council chambers is so i know we're kind of far along in the process but i just really think if you flopped it it could be just a home run um and, and I think that's that's pretty much it. I actually love the way the north elevation looks and I wish somehow the um, south elevation had that same, there's a sort of a, I don't know, maybe a, a little bit of an edge, a little urban edge, maybe with the black wrought iron, the vertical black wrought iron on the, if you can go to the north elevation um, and just okay. that the big, the big white area on the, on the south elevation to the right. Um, Let's see. Yeah, okay, well, there's one. So yeah, so some of the nice black wrought iron touches on this side, mm -hmm. up in the gables and around there, really, I, I really love the feel and look of that. And I wish I was gonna be seeing that when I drove down Tamil Pius, <clears throat> rather than what I see there. So, hey, maybe that's part of flipping it around, but I know you have elevation to issues and so forth. And thank you so much for really addressing the solar panel issue up front. I really want to make sure that we're doing a good job on all those areas too. So bravo, keep going, just flip it backwards and I'll be thrilled. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Uh, we have another, um, Mr. Michelle Miller. I allowed you to talk, just go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi. Sorry about that, Michelle, go ahead. There you go. Oh, sorry, I hit it once. Thanks. I guess it didn't take, okay. Um, sorry, I joined the meeting late. Um, but um, the new design looks great. Um, I just wanna comment on the previous comment um, because I live on the um, the what, the what east, east side of it. I don't uh, 
like the idea of flipping the courtyard. Um, you've got colonial liquors on that side as opposed to residences. You've got the fire station, but I'm across the street and noise and traffic continues to be a concern for me. Um, I'm, I'm also curious as to what the plan is for the courtyard. What kind of, will that space be rented out? Will it just be overflow or where people take a break from the, from the um, town council meetings? Or uh, yeah, I'd like to hear the intent around that. Um, but again, I also wanna voice my opposition to the previous um, uh, suggestion. All right, thank you. Um, just give a minute for anyone who wants to raise their hand also. Um, there's also a Q&A feature if you want to type a question that you have, I can read it to the commission. I think Tracy, I think Tracy may have gotten booted off. Yeah, Tr Tracy, just can everybody hear me? Yes. No. Tr Tracy just sent me a text that she got booted off the Wi-Fi. And I believe Adam as well. So it okay. should be on in a minute or so. It usually takes about that much time to cycle through. I can, I can look oh, at but you can now run the show. Right, there we go. <laughs> RJ and I are in charge. Um, I guess here's a here's a question from the Q and A. Are our plans available to see online? The answer is yes. You can go to the um, town project webpage, um, and you can see um, all the images that are we're seeing now, and those are the images that were sent to the planning commission at the pack on the packet day of um, of Friday. Yeah, and and since we're um, kind of waiting, I can, I can address um, one of there the. There we comments. go. Sorry. Oh, okay. Adam, I was just going to jump into kind of the um, the comment about the open canvas on the Willow side. And, and really, I, I view this, and I think um, we're on the same page, Adam, I, as kind of a future project down the road that would go through the full process and would go through the, the town hall process. So it's not that we're trying to shoehorn something in now and, and that hasn't been you know fully vetted. So it, it's really just an opportunity down the road um, once someone has um, passionate ideas from the community that we can. Yeah, we, ha we have egress there, then we have to keep that. There is an, a back door there from the office building out. But other than that, it's pretty, it's pretty open for a variety of different options to consider. But it's not critical for to decide at this point in terms of moving the project forward, whereas the other parts of what we're discussing tonight really are. Okay. Sorry about that, P Peter. Uh, yeah, apologies. Removed from the meeting in the middle of, of public comment, and there is an additional comment when you're ready to go back to that. Certainly, I see that there's a hand up. Go ahead. Thank you, uh, My Michael. I'm going to allow you to talk and go ahead and un unmute yourself when you're ready. Um, can you folks hear me? Yes. yes. Um, I'm not going to have a lot to say. Uh, I've expressed myself in writing several times. Just to say, I. Totally agree with Pat Ravazio. This is uh, in tearing down the old building, it presented an opportunity that we're overlooking of putting the council chambers at the focal point of the site. Uh, I think we're gonna be sorry about this for 50 years. And also there's a reason, uh, once you take the council chambers on the corner, the offices become a much more straightforward, simpler to construct building uh, without the mixed use and pulling a lot of those offices, which are mainly in the basement, up to plaza level. And, and a, at the same time, uh, preserving a lot of existing parking that the neighborhood has lately been talking about. And this all could happen no higher than the residential height limit of 30 feet on the east building. So I understand uh, the ship has left the port. 
but um, I, I think it's unfortunate because I think we, we had an opportunity to put the council chambers in the right spot and uh, for whatever reason of haste or not wanting to undo things, we're, we're not exploring it. But um, I'll leave it go at there. I think both, both, most of you know where I'm coming from, but I, I can answer questions. Okay, thank you, Michael. There is an additional um, comment or question that was added to the Q&A and that uh, for the staff and the architect, it reads, what will the ceiling look like in the new administration building? We're looking at uh, both, uh, with the administration building, we're looking at uh, open beam uh, and wood ceiling. Uh, which uh, one of the first things that if we get to move forward with this, we want to do is to show a reflected ceiling plan and study uh, the opportunities there. Uh, but you see, it's almost it's almost a square. You can you can imagine it. It's, you've got you have beams coming at forty five degree angle, and then you've got beams that, that fill that out uh, in, in each of the quadrants. Over on the uh, we're thinking trusses over on the uh, council chamber side. So again, you with a wood ceiling. So you'll there'll be some similarities, but they'll have each will have its own personality. Okay. Um, I see that. Uh, I guess Michael still has his hand up. Um, Do you have another? Uh, thank you. Okay. There we go. Um, does it? Uh, do you want to read any of the uh, commentary from uh, Jenna Hale, please? Unless she wants to speak as she's on the line. Phil, do you have that handy? I, I do not have a hard copy of that my hand. I can pull it up if you'd like. I doubt to stop sharing my screen. Um, I can more willing to go ahead and do that if you like. Oh, I think sharing the screen is important. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I guess it was you're talking about as, as we discussed before. You know, the ability to, to store some of the um, historic documents for, um, for the town, and we're certainly willing and open to to addressing those needs. Are you going to share, Phil, or no? I will be saying this. I just thought you'd send me. You do not want me to share. You want me to share the document, or? Well, now you've done that. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and read the three minutes of the document. Okay. Hang on one second. Let me take me a couple clicks to do that. As I unshare this one, and pull up the other one. Sorry about that. So, would you like me to read it? This is Jared. If, if somebody I, else, yeah, if somebody else has it handy, that would be great. Um, sure. I can read it. Yeah, no problem. Go ahead, please. Thank uh, you, so, yeah, no problem. This is uh, from John Hale um, on Monday, uh, May 24th at uh, 6.25 a.m. The Corte Madera Community Foundation Board of Directors is requesting confirmation that the new town hall will include a designated space for Corte Madera's archival local history materials to be safely stored, displayed, and made publicly accessible. Other municipalities in Marin have had local history rooms for many years, but Corte Madera has not yet managed to make space available for the Jerry Rick, Rick, Ricard collection, uh, excuse me if I mispronounce, of archival photographs, oral histories, written memoirs about our own town's early days and other documents that should be preserved and protected for the community's enjoyment. In conversations with the town manager during the past several years, we have mentioned the need for such a space to be provided by the town and have been assured that the town will make it happen. Now is the time to make good on that commitment as the new town hall is the appropriate place for Jerry Reichard's collection of archival materials to be permanently accommodated. The Corte Madera Community Foundation has been the steward of the collection during the years since the Corte Madera hit, 
Heritage and History Group relinquished its 501c3 status in 2010, at which time the California Secretary of State and Attorney General awarded custody of the collection to the Corte Madera Community Foundation. For several years, the collection continued to be stored in the basement of the Rikard home, but after both Ken and Jerry passed away and their home was sold, the foundation moved to collection to Central Marin Storage on San Clemente Drive. When the cost became prohibitively expensive, the foundation was able to have it stored at a small donated space on Paradise Drive where it practically inaccessible for any purpose. As one of the only surviving members of the Corte Madera Heritage and History Group that was formed in 1976, I became responsible for the foundation publishing a 189 page book, A History of Corte Madera in 2002 and for establishing the www.cortemaderamemories.org website in 2016. Both of these local history resources have proved to be very popular. People in our community are eager to know what life was like here in the past, and they value the opportunities to learn more. Many interested parts of Corte Madera's history need to be further explored, but that will happen only if the town makes good on its promise to allocate space for archival materials to be housed, reviewed, and shared with the public as articles, displays, web pages, podcasts, and presentations. Unless that happens, Corte Madera's local history archives could end up in a dumpster at some point. By my estimate, the minimum amount of space required must accommodate at least 144 cubic feet of archival materials storage on shelving with lockable doors, as well as a large table and chairs for sorting and reviewing archival materials and a separate table large enough to hold a computer, display screen, scanner, and printer. One wall should be available for large scale displays that might include commemorative quilt made in 1976 or the autograph quilt made in 1916. The floor plan shows shown in the staff report prepared for the May 25th planning commission meeting indicate that both the main level and the lower level of the new town hall will have a conference room that are approximately 10 feet by 21 feet, 210 feet in, square feet in size. That would provide ample built-in wall space for the requested storage of archival materials. And since each will contain a large conference table with seating for 10, either room could easily function as both a conference room and quarter Madera history room. The Corte Madera Community Foundation Board of Directors is eager to meet with town officials and have a productive conversation about available options for resolving this longstanding community issue. Best regards, John Hale. Just in the nick of time. Thank you, well Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Okay. So then there was um, some public comment by um, a member of the public, um, Phyllis Metcalf, and proposing a couple of uh, solutions for the uh, south elevation of the building. Yeah, and I think we're happy to, we have those at the back of the slide deck, Phil. Okay. For when you want to bring it back to uh, public, uh, back from public comment, we can do that. Or do, are we going to go to the Michael Harlock one or no? We've because uh, we can do that if you like. Okay. Which, so, which order do you want to do this in? Uh, there is yeah. one more hand raised for. By the way, are we are we closing? Have we closed public comment oh, or no? We have We're not. Still, no. Okay. Good. No. So um, I would go to the uh, images that are there. Um, from from, um, from for, Commissioner uh, Metcalf? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Phil, are you the one who's doing this? Could you yes, go yes. to my number three? The number correct three. number three. That's one, that's two, and then there's a three. The correction I sent this morning. I hope I hope that is it. Is that it? No. Okay. 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 Then let's yeah, go not, to yeah. It was on that, that up? on that other page, Phil. That... Yeah. It's another page. I had we... to take a photograph of it because every time I try to send something to Van Acker, it screws up my scanner. So I had to take a photograph with my phone and send it over. It's on its way. There it is. Okay, the, the top the one. one yeah. The top one up at the top, yeah. the one that the background's darker. Okay. Do you want me to explain what yes, I was doing please. and why? Okay. Yeah. I, I find the North perspective uh, very exciting, very interesting. It's, and I agree with Pat about that. I uh, find the uh, perspective for the South perspective kind of there. It's, um, and it's basically the West part. I think that great mass of roof 
roofing materials I find to be boring. You know, you know, that's a personal opinion. And looking at it, I started playing around with it. Now that I've seen, Adam, where you want to put the um, solar panels or where Ron wants, thinks the solar panels should go, that it would not interfere with the south elevation of the roof. So the first thing I looked at, which was number one, which is the bottom one, was just doing a dormer, kind of like the dormers we see in other parts, but the dormer by itself was kind of, it looked like it was just stuck there. So then I tried number two, which was actually adding the glass panel onto the roof and the dormer above, and I found that that was heavy. It's, I know that's not an architectural term, but it weighted it down. So I finally got to number three. And uh, looking at number three, the glass panels would replace the two windows in the center, those two offices. And um, since they would it would start in level with the bottom of the windows and then have the dormer. The dormer matches the uh, dormers, not only in the back, but the dormer on the west side of the plaza. Yeah. Uh, which is hidden. When you look at the picture, you can't see it because of the trees. But if you look at the roof line one, you can see where there is a dormer facing towards the west. So I would like to discuss with the architect and the other commissioners the possibility of, as I say, my first preference would be doing three. And uh, the, um, of course, that window would not be uh, going across both offices, you've got to have a wood panel in the center that matches the interior wall division. And I think it just makes it look more interesting and more of the excitement you see with the uh, Northern exposure. So I'd like comments, if I may ask for comments from other people, especially from the architect and the engineer and Adam and I have discussed it and I guess then well, the commissioners. Yeah. I would recommend that we go through public comment first and then close the public comment and then come back and we can, we're happy to have yes. that conversation uh, rather than a back and forth during public comment. Oh, yeah. I thought public comment was closed. That's why you no, asked me to do this. So, okay. No, this is considered public comment. Uh, to, oh. So this is, um, very good. Thank you, Phyllis, for uh, explaining what you had in mind there. So we also have a Q&A um, question from uh, Guillermo yep. Montoya, who asks, is it too late to simplify the roof lines? The proposed roof appears that is not flowing with the overall design. Which roof line? Yeah, we can take that after. Yeah. You know, looks like um, Michael's raised his hand again. Peter, if you'd like, certainly, to... yeah, Mr. Harlock. Uh... There you go, Mr. Harlock. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Um, just, just to the point that Phyllis was making, um, what we're really dealing—you're missing the point of uh, uh, Pat in mind completely what we're doing and Phyllis is doing and I appreciate the struggle is creating a false hat on a building that really could have a flat ceiling so this volume is pretty much a false front and we're just uh, putting lipstick on the pig here not that it's bad looking but the volume over the office space is is unusable except for sol solar panels that's all. Thank you, Michael. Dare I say, uh, we have no one else with a, a hand up at the moment. You have no uh, email no hands to uh, public comment at tcmmail.org. And uh, no, no emails have been received there either. Okay. Well, 
I'm going to then close the public comment section of this uh, meeting. Seems that everybody has spoken. Um, and we'll take it back and we'll talk to the commissioners here about their thoughts and feelings about what they've heard tonight. Um, Shall I continue with what I was saying then? Yeah, and yes, um, I think that what we're going to provide staff with is a, uh, if we can, if we come to a consensus between the three of us about what uh, we think is the right, or at least be very explicit about our uh, directions that each of us have. So go ahead, Phyllis. Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to respond. I understand what Pat and Michael are saying about flipping the building, putting the council chambers on the west side. Uh, two problems. Number one, it would mean starting from scratch. You can talk about maybe another two or three years before you get anything done. And costs are going up, just looking at the cost of lumber alone and the other materials. And number two, it is the elevation of the land. We're not talking about a flat lot. So as it doesn't really work flipping it over it the way I normally would be something that's easy to do. So I think, and I'm sure the, the architect can talk, you know, I may have a degree in architect, but I'm not a working architect, that the architect can describe this much better. All my concern has been is that the excitement of the back of the building with that I just agree with the fellow who's concerned about the roof of Paul's in, I think is very exciting, very interesting, very eye-catching. And I'd like to see that feeling in the roof line in the front, which I don't see. I just think that wide expanse of roof material is boring over the West area. I realize, you know, there has to be the space for the panels, the solar panels, and it should be, but that would be done I uh, we don't have a copy of what you showed in the slide, Ron, but that would be on, it looks like mostly the west side and uh, a little bit on the east side. East side yep. yep. If I'm correct. And nothing is there on the south side, the front. So I would, my feeling is, and I say I prefer my number three, which is the top one. I just think it makes that part of the building more interesting. It balances out better with the interesting uh, deep uh, panels of glass on the east side with the naming of the building with the flagpoles. And I just think it's more exciting and not as bland. It's what we see and as I say, one and two are options, but I think three to me is the answer. And, Ron, you yeah, I, I think each one's one, two, and three, I just think look, all three look better than what we see now. And um, as I say, my preference is three. Okay. Ron, do you want to say a few words or remarks about just yeah. where, where you were going with that? And maybe, Phil, can you go to the other yeah. uh, images? Make, uh, make this a smaller piece. So can we look at both things together? Uh, first of all, Phyllis, I definitely appreciate uh, what you're yeah. uh, what you're saying. Uh, what we've uh, the uh, I guess the problem I I understand that it looks good uh, from uh, Tamil Pius uh, Drive. It, you know, going by, it looks a little more substantial. We were, uh, but it looks like you want to go in there, and we're not asking people to go in there. We're asking them to go around the corner. Uh, and go into the plaza. So we're looking at the plaza back to an earlier question about how the plaza was going to be programmed. Uh, we've called it an outdoor, uh, you know, an outdoor room. So we were trying to gather people there and then bring them into the building at that point. So uh, the uh, the application on the, on the south elevation, uh, I get it. Uh, and I'm not, you know, if it got down to it, I wouldn't, you know, be opposed to incorporate that idea. We had actually studied some dormer ideas before we went to what we thought was simple and elegant. You're calling it boring, you know, it's a uh, very subjective art uh, that we're involved with. Some people, uh, you know, may, may love hip, hip roofs and other people may, may not. Uh, 
Well, you know, Frank Lloyd Wright said that doctors can correct their mistakes. Architects can only tell their clients to grow vines and <laughs> it is all subjective. But we've all moved beyond, you know, I mean, uh, a few generations past Frank Lloyd Wright as well. So, you know, we're trying to work with the community here as I, I hope you understand, you know, both in terms of the exterior spaces in terms of the uh, archival, historic archival material, which by the way, I just flipped through that website and there's some, there's a form that looks exactly like what we're looking at right now. It was a, uh, it was a church in 1905 in Puerto Madera. It was an Episcopal church. It was interesting. So um, I think if we, so uh, we are trying to simplify this shape so that it kind of gives priority to some of the other things like council chamber. If we go to the north for just a minute, uh, north elevation, uh, we also tried to put the dormers where certain things were happening. Uh, like a seating area or an entry point. Uh, we did it as an entry point for the council chambers. So we tried to connect it to a, 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 a function. What is that but one that has the arrow on it now? The arrow on it now, that's, that's that lobby seating area. So uh, again, I'm not you know, uh, uh, strongly opposed to it. I'm giving you my thinking on it. Uh, we we have uh, you know we have gone down the road uh, you know uh, pretty far uh, with with this project. I, I think it's probably too far to flip it over because I, I agree that to flip it means a, a redesign. Yeah. And, and I would say we also did. If you look at the progress one, we also sort of explored some. Phil, if you can go up to slide, what was it? Uh, yeah. Did you like that six. one? Six. Yeah. The six one with was. The peak. No. no, that's more of a kind of a craftsman barn type of motif. Yeah. I would say. I'm not a big fan of craftsmen, I guess. Well, I like kind of a, sort of a craftsman neighborhood. I know, but I'm just saying it. That's a craft. I don't know. I, I don't find it's that wide expanse of roofing material that I think turns me off. I mean, yeah, it's. Yeah. There's nothing interesting about it. It's there. Whereas, as I say, in the back of the building, there's so much happening with other parts of it you don't notice. And here, you know, uh, the closet area is the straight roof. You know, it's lower, so it's not as obtrusive. You obviously have a very interesting feeling to where the council chambers are. And I just think that that area needs improvement. And it's basically the roof that's the problem. The window areas are lovely. We had worked on those several months ago with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, as you can see, you know, we've been pretty flexible uh, in uh, mm -hmm. responding to the community. So uh, my opinion would be, let's, let's see how the discussion develops. And I'm sure that we yeah. can, you know, accommodate whatever the, the, you know, the majority view is. Yeah. Well, and I, even and I, and I, looking at number two of my three, which is just doing, not doing anything on the siding of the building, but just on the roof, putting the same, following, of course, the roof line, you know, of just uh, having a dormer there of glass set in, I don't know what Bill did with the ones I did. I can, I can jump back to that. I'm sorry, it's kind of it's kind of clunky for me to jump back and forth, but I can jump I back if you like. I'm sorry. Well, we, I, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the, the, uh, the lower. I'll hold it up. If, I don't know if you can see. Yeah. If I yeah. bring it forward. Yeah. Can you see yeah. what I'm talking about? Yes. Doing that, that would be. So I, I still think, I mean, I don't agree with you, Ron, that people think that's a door because it's, unless it can be opened, it's not a door. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I just, Sorry. I don't have my 11 by 17 uh, printer anymore. And I took the programs, you know, drawing architectural things off my computer. I needed the space for other things. But, you know, if wood is there, the width of the wood panel that is going to be following the interior division of the two rooms. It could be wider or something like that. It just, it's not going to be glass straight across, obviously, because you have an interior wall. Mm -hmm. 
where it doesn't have to be floor level. If it's the pleasure of the decision makers, we can definitely explore that. Yeah. Not that hard to explore. I, and, and I think your drawings are very clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, Go ahead. For, just from, you know, also, I think one of the, there is a very, you know, significant difference between the uh, approach, I think, on the north elevation versus the south. But one of the things why we shifted, as you know, we had the, the sort of the dual gabled roofs, uh, what we presented on May 4th, and we really went away from, yeah, we went away from that yeah. to try to sort of differentiate yeah. the functional office space from uh, the council chambers and really also to set off the council chambers as a sort of more of a, a, a special sort of unique statement from an architectural perspective. So, um, and it will be easily identifiable as that's more of a civic building, whereas this is the other one. I, again, I, I would love to hear more conversation. I, none of us really have us, you know, I think we're not, I think we just wanted to explain the, the simple form versus sort of adding more um, dormers, but certainly that is something that is an option that we could certainly explore if, as the discussion develops and just would love to hear from others as well on this because um, uh, it's, it's, we're focused on a single element here, which is, which is um, you know, out of the scheme of things is, is really um, workable and doable. So I, I'm curious how others, how others feel. You know, I did make it, Adam, so if you had printed out the pages that I did, it could be laid right on top of the hard copy of Ron's, so you could see it all together. As I say, I could only do half because I don't have that particular printer any longer. It's okay. We, we, need, right. we need to continue the conversation. Let's okay. hear, you know, go back. Yeah. Let's see, um, Dr. Bundy, uh, you're... Uh, muted at the moment, but uh, if you can unmute yourself, um, I'd like to have you chime in. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, these are all really interesting discussions from uh, Michael and, and Pat uh, and uh, Phyllis in regard to you know how to, uh, to enhance uh, you know this west building. Uh, you know, I I had looked a lot at uh, Michael's comments before and uh, his thoughts in regard to that. And ultimately, I think I came to the feeling that uh, the council chamber uh, being on the east side actually is close to what the council chamber is now that we have. Oh, you know, we're looking out a second story, uh, looking out sort of over things, although we'll be much further uh, to the east. And the plaza, that's really come along uh, nicely with the trees centered in there, you know, I think is the, the spot that sets off the council chambers for people being able to walk out there, uh, you know, take a break or just uh, be able to enjoy the redwoods and the plaza. So ultimately I, you know, came to the conclusion that, you know, this is probably the, uh, the right place uh, for the uh, council chambers. Um, in regard to, to some of the issues of the gable, uh, I think I'm getting above my pay grade in regard to this. Uh, we were looking at doing a remodel on our house, which has a simple hipped roof. Uh, we looked at dormers with some additions. Ultimately, we pulled back and just re-roofed uh, the, uh, the hipped roof. Uh, it is simple. And, and basic, uh, but it, you know, has a uh, nice flow to it. Uh, I think the idea that Ron is uh, working on from the standpoint of having that uh, west elevation uh, more residential, uh, and I think that's a good feel for it, would be enhanced with some landscaping there. Uh, the issue of a little more interesting gable on the south side of the west uh, administrative building is interesting. I do think, as Ron mentioned, that when I see that, I think there should be an entrance there. So I'm, um, you know, really don't have a, a really strong yep. feeling. Uh, I, like, I like the design as it is. It could be enhanced with what uh, Phyllis is describing. 
uh, or it could uh, just uh, complicate things. So those are those are my thoughts. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate what you're saying about the uh, building to the east. Um, for my part, um, I agree with you uh, that the building council chamber function should remain there in the middle of the block, not on the corner where there's traffic on the side street and the front. Um, I think that's a place where if you come out of the council chamber, if you want to empty out into a plaza rather than onto the street front, I think it's more important to have it there uh, in the middle of the block. Um, it'll be quieter, safe for the rare fire engine escape. Um, but, you know, having the plaza as a part of the council chamber is very important. People leave the council chamber and they go outside and they want to talk. That's the best place to do that. I don't think there's any question about it that that's the right place. Flipping it, as uh, one uh, commenter pointed out, puts it uh, adjacent to Colonial Liquors um, and the street. I just don't think that's appropriate. So having the quieter administrative work on the west side, I think is appropriate. The, uh, the four hip roof is large and it looks almost like a Southwest style building then. I support Phyllis's uh, third number three, or the one that Ron Kepi had where there was a uh, high glass uh, uh, element to the roof there before. I think that does a great deal to keep it from looking so much like just a massive roof. I, w I think it is too much roof mass and that this does something to discount it and might be a, a, an interesting way to bring some light into the building through that. Uh, high light and uh, facing south. So I think that's almost a necessary element to break up that large expanse of roof and it does so nicely, I think. Um, so all in all, I think everything has arrived at in a very nice fashion that's very complementary to each other. I think the quieter function to the uh, west administrative uh, pod is appropriate, um, but it is a, a roof problem that is too much roof for the building. And I would support the solution of creating some sort of um, high glass element to it in one form or another. So that's where I stand with this. I think it's a great effort and you guys have come a long ways with this. That's great. So it sounds it sounds like we do have consensus, um, and I'll just try to maybe summarize what we've heard, and then we can get some uh, sort of uh, confirmation from the three of you. But it seems like all in all, we the commission supports sort of the certainly the um, the plan as proposed in terms of where uh, you know uh, the administrative building is located, and we'll call it the permit center. Uh, and then also uh, the, the sort of the new design approach that we've presented here with the hip roof, but, but sort of no more work needs to be done on the roof, um, especially the Southern, uh, well, uh, to, to reduce the sort of the massiveness or the um, extent of the exposure of this roof as it, as it would be too um, sort of like a, um, almost uh, too highly visible here. Um, so some elements need to be introduced, whether that's sort of along the lines of what Phyllis has proposed or a higher element perhaps, but something that um, when we go back and, and work on this some more with Ron, we can sort of work through some um, additional options there before we go back to the, the council on June 15th and, and present that to them. Is that is that sound uh, like I summarized it correctly for all of for for my the three of you? From my yeah. perspective, yes. Yes. Phyllis as well. Yes. Okay, great. There's a couple of missing elements here, and that I I do think uh, Jonah Hill's request for a repository and a place for organization of the 
Oh yeah. Archival records is yep. Is we'll note that. I think it's very critical. Um, and then there needs to be a place for a bust of Donna Hale in the plaza there. <laughs> <laughs> I like. That. We'll start That's the fundraising great. tonight, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, Peter. Uh, I don't know who's going to be in touch with Jan, if it will be you from the commission or maybe Adam, you. From her uh, email or letter, whatever it was, she talks about exhibiting in the room where the storage is. And I'd like someone to share with her, I guess Bob Bundy may be the right one since he's, all, he's the president of the commission, of actually having it on the walls that were pointed out during the staff report for the public to see. A lot of the public may not know to go in a room to look at, or, you know, that, and that display could change at times. Different yeah. things that uh, the society, you know, the group can put together. So somebody should check with her and see if she's Absolutely. open to that. Absolutely. No, and I think that's a, like I said, like we said earlier, it's a, it's a great conversation to have and one that obviously can develop over time, but certainly can be planned for now as well um, in terms of just finding, making sure we have the space available. But there's a variety of ways, I think, to exhibit it, provide the, the research space and, and sort of the more quiet space, archival space, um, but also have uh, be able to bring that stuff out when people come in to the meetings and whatnot. So, so yeah, we'll, we'll continue that conversation. I don't think, I mean, for the... Like, you know, some of these conversations I think can extend um, down the road in the, in, the, in the months as we as we get into greater design detail and the engineered plans and, and whatnot. And also you know, the lighting we'll, we'll plan, that. Adam, yep. because if there's going to be displays on those walls that were pointed out and behind the plaza, you would want uh, a, a lighting built in that would be on the walls to show off what is on it. Absolutely. And you there's don't a, want a lot of in the ceiling. I mean, it has to with the glare little... and all those things that they do it with museums. Absolutely. No, I think, you know, obviously we're, we're, we're here at this stage. There's a lot of additional detail that needs to get worked on um, through the next several months. And, and um, we're, we'll be doing all that. Um, and uh, we, we're happy to come back to the commission at some point in the future and, and sort of just provide some additional information if that's something you want to mm -hmm. to see, or, or I can report on that during my yes. director reports and let you know of the progress on, on all of these things. Peter, may I yeah. ask a question of Ron? Looking at this, I'm beginning to be, I, I tell my son he pushes too hard when he doesn't get his way and now I'm doing it. When you, you are fear of uh, my number three would look too much like a door. You do have a walkway along there and you have the fencing. Nice, it looks like Rhode Island fencing. You could stop the fencing. I don't have a pointer. Maybe after that first set, it, I don't know, that looks like a floor to ceiling set of windows, the one on the far right. Right. Yeah, over there. Oh, yes. That one is, yeah. Yeah, that you could stop the fencing there and end that patio there. If you were concerned that in the center, they think this is a way to enter. If there's no way to get to it, they can't enter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, so it's it's really just a, it, it, it's an image that breaks up the, uh, the mass of the roof and, you know, ha has a sense of place yeah. and, and a sense of connection to what's going on on the north side. I, I get that. Well, I, I'm not opposed to study that. And you, you know, you have the nice walkway there showing where to go in the plaza. That's right. Okay. All right. Thank you. I think uh, we have some uh, uh, consensus from the commission and, and appreciate your, your time and energy and, and effort and all the members of the public who spoke up tonight to provide their, their comments. And we'll, we have a good direction now to go back to uh, the town council at the next uh, in June. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right, then we'll close this item. And so the, and any changes that are made from now on will not be coming back to us. They'll be going directly to the council. Is that correct, Adam? Yeah, 
typically that's what we would do if the if the council wants to you know to it to be reviewed like it was if it's there's sort of a um, some it's somewhat of an just intuitive sort of threshold if we cross that ultimately we bring it back or I'd make we'd make that recommendation but but uh, um, ultimately we'll we'll let that decision rest with the town council whether they want to sort of have additional review at the at the commission level for any changes going forward and you know I, I don't think we expect that's not our expectation at this point I think with the big one was obviously this was a major shift in direction once we decided to go with a uh, replacement uh, or a demo and replacement um, project. Well, one of the things I was going to suggest is we used to have once a year a joint council uh, commission meeting. And this might be something that could be done where the commissioners and the council meet together and talk about it and then the council makes its decision could be done at the same meeting if that was their major agenda item you know I think I we're really, well I yeah I mean I don't like I said I, I don't want to anticipate that we're at this point I think staff and, and, and Ron and all of us are sort of eager to bring this forward mm -hmm. and we don't expect a significant changes at this point um, okay. other than sort of just looking at the the roof form so yeah. um, hopefully we can we can clear that um, you know, uh, in June and then move forward with uh, the engineered plans. And if something comes up that we need to discuss, we will do so. And certainly that would be an option at that point if we need to be more efficient with a review that we theoretically could just have a joint meeting between both if that's what, something that the council wants to do. Yeah, and Adam, if I can just, just add a little note, um, we're, we're kind of approaching critical path on getting the design in order to advertise in December, which is really going to be the optimum time to get the best pricing. Um, so I know we've had a lot of comments about overall budget, you know, over the last two years, and we really want to get the best price possible. And, and really, we're, we're getting close. And, and I think to Adam's point it doesn't mean that um, we can't um, check in and, and go through some of these details. But um, if we do halt um, for any significant amount of time, it will probably cost us, um, you know, town funds. Peter? And significant town yes. funds. Yes, okay, Phyllis, yes. Yeah, I'd like to add, RJ, I take it you're the one who will be putting together the budget for this um, as so we do the engineering. Uh, yeah, so we've been working. Um, we have a, a specialist um, on okay. the team, on Ron C. Mac, Mac 5, who that's all they do okay. is, is estimates. Um, so obviously we'll be doing, um, you know, estimates as we go along to kind of check in and make sure we're within range. Okay. Um, um, but I just know from just a, yeah. a bidding perspective, really, um, we're going to get best pricing in that kind of yeah. September time frame. No, I wasn't questioning the timing. I was going to make a suggestion of something that I learned from the former head of what used to be called the Marines Builders Exchange, where they used to have the plan room for people to go, you know, look at plans. And uh, Pete Aragoni said to me, it's better to have a contingency fund for any changes and then, and come not use it all and come in lower than expected than to have all sorts of change orders and start adding on to what the cost was supposed to be. So I was gonna say, you may wanna look at that and see besides all of the costs that are uh, figured out have a certain amount of money put aside for a contingency fund for anything that's discovered as the work goes on. Yeah, thank you. I guarantee you they'll have a contingency fund. I know. Okay. So. All right. Um, so at this point, we're going to leave this item behind. Uh, we're going to move out of the uh, city council chambers discussion and we can bring Mr. Rizzo back to the meeting. And uh, Ron, thank you very much. Thank you. Very uh, helpful and interesting discussion. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. Um, I'm sort of reluctant to leave that discussion. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting and fun. Um, so Margaret tonight was to report on the last week's uh, town council meeting. And she's not here tonight, so um, she always gives a good report. But um, if somebody else wants.
watched or attended the meeting, they could uh, do that. Phyllis. I think, you know, we should have Margaret give an in-depth report because she does do very good reports. But in general, and the meeting went for several hours and the big discussion was about buying furniture for the uh, plaza outside of uh, Cafe Verde. And uh, from Margaret had talked to me about it afterwards. She said it went past 10 o'clock and it was a matter of which furniture to use, examples of furniture, a lot of things that she was surprised and was asking me, is this something that the council gets into or do they just set the budget and let staff figure out what to do? So um, I had seen a part of it and to be honest with you, I kind of got bored so I stopped watching, but she having to do a report stayed to the very end and said it just went on and on about if furniture was from Crate and Barrel, if it was from RH and who was doing what. And it's something to keep in mind whether or not that is really council level to do for the future. They may end up having meetings that the Novato meetings used to be like going to one in the morning and continuation two days later. We're warned, okay. Yes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Wolf. Do you have anything to Yeah, I mean, I think that was a probably a good summation there. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, we also, the council also um, adopted with a lot less fanfare, the, uh, I should say, accepted with a lot less fanfare, the climate adaptation plan, um, which, you know, had been worked on for many, um, I, and sorry, it's now the climate adaptation assessment. So that, that has been for about a two year project. Um, with a couple of, uh, you know, slight changes to the name and, and some, a lot of editing, a lot of community input. So it was a very, um, you know, uh, engaged process and, and a, in particular with community residents, both at the Mariner Cove and Marina Village neighborhoods and also up on the hillsides, both getting, um, you know, which is great to see that there's a lot of um, people really uh, engaged and in, in invested in sort of making sure that this document represented and uh, what they felt was appropriate for Corte Madera at this time. Uh, it's a living document and that was clear and that's going to go on and, and, and many of the things will actually touch this commission as well moving forward. Maybe even more immediate than uh, some of the other stuff in the in the assessment as well. So um, I, you know, I think it would be good. What I'd like to do is give RJ and the team a little bit of a break, but I would love to bring them, you know, the team back for a little bit of a review or summary, just just a summary um, of the assessment for the commission. I'm, I'm happy to do it as well with RJ or um, can do it myself, but, but um, that would be good for the commission to just to get a, a more in-depth look at it. And then, um, and then it's a you know it, it it starts to help us think about um, strategies and actions uh, and options moving forward, and that's really the that's really the purpose of it. Um, so that was on the agenda, uh, and then uh, I think I think that was the uh, like Phyllis. I did not stay to the end um, <laughs> when when the the conversation regarding furniture got into that level of detail. I said, hey, it's my, you know, my, maybe my time to cut out um, at 10 o'clock or whatever it was. So I don't have anything else to report on that. Um, did want to mention we, we are going to continue our objective design standards conversation with the working group tomorrow. So what the plan is, is really to, to talk to the working group uh, and Phyllis as the representative for the planning commission will be there tomorrow. Um, we're starting basically taking the direction we got at the joint meeting uh, and, and presenting a recommended customization approach. And Martha will be leading that conversation tomorrow with the working group. Um, and so we are starting to sort of cull some of the sections, make some recommendations on um, uh, changes uh, and, and actually putting in place some zones for all of our areas uh, in that allow housing in Corte Madera and uh, in anticipation of some potential legislation as well that Phyllis is more aware of than I. So uh, in any case, um, that's tomorrow at 1.30. It's open 
to any member of the public. Uh, but of course, after we do that and get some direction and guidance and, and some comments from the working group, we'll come back to the planning commission as well. The, the plan is right now at the end of June and, and vet that with the commission and in terms of um, sort of showing you a cut, you know, basically a recommended sort of customized toolkit um, and, and get some uh, in a workshop and get your feedback on that before preparing the zoning amendment and the actual more formal public hearing and, and whatnot on, on amending our zoning code to incorporate this, the, the toolkit. So that's going on there. Um, be on the lookout. Uh, the other thing to note, and talked about this at the community chat, um, uh, there will be some, um, there's some discussion. Uh, the Marin Municipal Water District will be bringing to their board on June 1st, mm -hmm. next week, a proposal to potentially uh, place a moratorium on new water connections. Um, there are some other options they're presenting to their board, but the board did uh, request that they bring that option to uh, the water districts board um, on June 1st. So it, it sounds like that's a real possibility. Uh, North Marin water district already put in place a moratorium, new water connections. Um, we're still trying to at a staff level with their staff trying to understand really what the details of that might be. Um, I'm gonna look for the staff report to come out here, but it also, um, may play into our some decision making we do. Um, well, anyways, I'll just I'll, I'll get once I get the details, I'll you know, at maybe at the next commission meeting, I can tell you the specifics mm -hmm. of what's what's actually uh, taking place. Um, but certainly um, something for our, our construction and development community to be aware of. Uh, and then one last thing, Phyllis, I'll give finally just um, the other thing to note is that the uh, appeal period for the RENA numbers is just opened um, and it will, will be open for about 45 days. So it closes on July 9th. So I, I anticipate I'll, I'm going to be bringing something um, as a discussion item to the town council next week on that and get some direction from the council in terms of um, uh, that issue. So a lot, a lot of busy stuff going on, and uh, all, all interesting and exciting, and and uh, or depending on how you look at it. So, um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's my report. Thank you. Tell us what's on your mind. Now? Um, I was going to suggest that Adam may want to look at what happened last time they had a moratorium. You may have already been back east at school when it happened but it lasted for about a year, year and a half. Bob Bundy and might know, or I think you were here too, Peter, at the time. But uh, it was not easy. At one yeah. point, they wanted to do 50 gallons a day per person. They actually sent questionnaires to our homes, but we had to fill them out knowing how many people were here. And we were told if you have someone who's a student away at school, you can't count them, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, something to be aware of. I don't think they're going that dire right now, but we should be aware of it. The yeah, thing, it, it, go ahead. Yeah, the other thing is um, I've been staying in touch with Adam as uh, Sacramento has been doing its damage or trying to. And two of the bills that can affect us and what we're doing even tomorrow at the odds meeting, SB9 and SB10 are actually gonna be voted on tomorrow on the floor and then go to the assembly. It's um, the other thing is if you to read it online, uh, Dick Spotswood did an excellent article that appears in the IJ online tonight. It may I don't know if it's in tomorrow's paper, the hard copy, talking about what's happening from Sacramento and what the cities and towns. Uh, can do in Marin to protect itself and things that, you know, suggestions he has made from the people that he has talked to. So it's worth reading. Look for that. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Okay. Mr. Rizzo, you've not had much to say tonight. Because you've been out there. It's been an easy meeting for me. <laughs> All ears. Sorry for that. Um, in any case, 
Um, anything you want to say about the uh, future agenda items, Adam, at all? No, or you know, you can see that it looks like uh, Phil will have a preliminary study session for a, a quite a significant um, proposal. Basically, I think it's a demolition and yeah, and yeah. a rebuild of a new home on Redwood, right up from the intersection there. So um, that's a preliminary meeting. Other than that, like I mentioned, uh, the second meeting in June, we're going to come back to the odds discussion. That's the plan, anyways. Unless we'll we'll see what happens at the at the working group meeting tomorrow. But um, that's it for now. That's it. Uh, we have meet, minutes to approve for the planning mm -hmm. yep. meeting of April 27th. Do we hear a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. All right. All in favor? Okay. Aye. 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 Okay, great. All right. So our next meeting will be held Tuesday, June 8th at 7 p.m. With that said, I will adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you all.